As I record this, it's only the first day of the new year, 2024, and already Atari and PlayOn have released a new firmware update for the 2600 Plus. Now it's actually a beta update, but it's available now for you to download and you can install it on your 2600 Plus. I'm gonna walk you through where to get it and how to do it right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on this video. And if you did, I'm sure it's because you're eager to find out how to upgrade your Atari 2600 Plus to version 1.1, or in this case, 1.1 beta is what's publicly available. It has been posted by Ben, a representative of PlayOn over on the Atari Age forums. And Ben has actually provided very detailed and comprehensive instructions for how to get this done over in that thread that I'm gonna to link to down below. But I'm a visual learner. I actually do better seeing how to do tasks in video and seeing people actually click on the things. So I'm gonna offer this up here to you. Now, this is how to install this beta firmware as of the time of recording this. If it changes a little, I'll make sure to let you know in a pinned comment down below this video. If it changes a lot, well, I'll probably be doing another video to, <laughs> to talk about all the things that have changed. So let's get after it. If you've updated anything in the past, whether it's a game station or a flashback or your Evercade or whatever, then you probably are familiar with some of the tools we're gonna download. And I'm linking you over to the Atari Age forum where Ben has provided not only his instructions I mentioned, but all of these downloads. As with many firmware upgrades, you're gonna need a few tools and access to a PC running Windows 10 or 11, to the best of my knowledge. The files you need to download are these four. They include a dumper, a driver, a flash tool, and the firmware image itself. And then I would recommend just making a folder on your desktop and unpacking these archives right into that folder so everything is in the same place. Now, before we begin, let's verify what version of firmware we're currently on, uh, on our 2600 Plus. And what you wanna do is anytime the 2600 Plus is booting and loading a game, pulling that cartridge into memory, you'll see here in the lower right-hand corner is the version. And right now, mine says it's on version 1.00. And with any luck, when we're finished, that's gonna say something newer and different. The very first thing we need to do is run that Atari dumper on our Windows PC. That's one of the items I had you download. With that running, go ahead and plug the Plus into your PC using a USB-C cable that supports both power and data. And then you're gonna need to know these little Konami code style secret handshakes of switches in order to get the device to respond the way we need it to. In the use case here for the dumper, you need to make sure that the TV type switch is in black and white, and then hold down on the select button while you power on the device and you should hear a little ding coming from your Windows computer. In the dumper software, you should see a green detected notification. Then just click that download button, wait a few seconds, and it will be all done. For our second step now, we need to install the driver for the 2600's emulation engine. Now, if you've not done software updates or firmware updates of other devices like this in the past, you shouldn't have any problem. However, I ran into a hiccup because I've used the same computer to update several devices that use this arcade dev tool that we're gonna be using in a second and the driver kind of got conf confused a little bit. Now this is, I'm sure, gonna be improved in the future, but as it stands right now, I recommend you either work on a Windows PC where you have never done an upgrade like this in the past to avoid any sort of collisions, or if you have, you need to scrub your PC like I did to get all past drivers off of your computer entirely. Then you wanna plug the plus back into your computer, but this time we have a new secret handshake. You need to put the TV type in the color mode, hold down on the game start switch, and then power it on. Again, listen for that little ding. Then you're going to need to go to your device manager inside of Windows and look for this unknown device, which is in fact the 2600 plus. Then you need to right click and update the driver, point to that unpacked driver assistant folder that we got from Atari age and make sure you've ticked look in all subfolders and then click okay. It should only take a couple of seconds. Then you'll get this window that lets you know it was successfully installed and now you're good to go. This third and final step then is to install the actual firmware. Now again, I would turn off the 2600 plus and then launch that arcade dev tool that was in one of the packages we grabbed from Atari age. We're gonna do that same secret handshake, TV type in color, hold down the start switch and then power it on. 
your windows will go ding, and the PK Dev tool should say found one mask ROM device that lets you know that we are communicating. Now click on the Upgrade Firmware tab, click on the Firmware button, and select the firmware we downloaded. It's that Update-1225 image. You'll see the full path to it there in that Firmware field. Now click the Upgrade button. This should only take a minute or two. It will be showing you progress along the way, and when it reaches 100%, you're all done. Turn off your 2600 Plus, and let's go plug it back into a TV, power it on, and find out if in fact we are on a new firmware version. And there we go, version 1.1, and it even calls out the version of the Stella emulator now. Now remember, in this tutorial, I installed the 1.1 beta. I would expect the full 1.1 to release to be provided to everyone on Atari's site, in fact, within a week or maybe even just a few days. It shouldn't take too long. So what can you expect in the 1.1 version? It's all good news and improvements. Not every problem has been fixed. And if you want to browse that thread on Atari Age that I'm uh, recommending that you do, and it's where we downloaded all these files, you can see people's results in testing this new firmware. A lot of PAL improvements. We fixed the reversed buttons for 7800 controllers. We fixed the reverse difficulty switches that were, their logic was backwards. So many more games that didn't used to work now fully or partially work. Some homebrews work, Look, plenty of stuff. There's gonna be a lot more to talk about as we get the full release of the 1.1 firmware and subsequent ones. Look, I said in my review that the 2600 Plus's proof of performance is going to be in how Atari treats it in its future support, which is we're here now in the future getting that support. We already have a beta firmware, new firmware coming around the corner. And I can see from uh, looking at the discussions over on Atari Age that uh, they're taking all these reports very seriously and tackling them one by one as they come. So things are looking bright for the 2600 Plus if you have one. So you might want to install this beta update, this firmware, or wait for the full one, whatever it is. Again, any updates, check the pinned comment down below. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this quick tutorial, and I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.